Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to ET Ski Tutorials, and this is FPS 1.1. Um, so this is going to be the first episode of a series of tutorials to teach you how to make a first-person shooter. So I'm going to be going over in this episode just all the different game objects, all the different prefabs, and I'm going to be going over kind of how the scripts are going to be working together, just so that you can get like a big like picture of how this game is going to work and how all the different parts are going to work together. So you're gonna like need to know that information before we actually make the whole game and so that you can just like visualize as we're making something you can actually see like how it's going to affect the big picture. So that's what this episode is gonna be about and I have a little list right here but this is just a little list of all the different game objects, prefabs, and scripts. So let's go over them. We're going to be starting off with the player capsule. And what the player capsule actually is, is a physical pill capsule looking thing. It's just a big gray pill capsule, the approximate size and shape of a human being. Uh, because we're going to put the uh, camera right in the middle of that, and it's going to be looking outside this pill capsule. And then we just eventually are going to turn the pill capsule off so you can't see it. So you don't really need to see it, and it doesn't have to look good, because you're never going to see it, because like, in simple first-person shooters, you usually don't see much of your player, except for their hands, their gun, and sometimes their feet. Um, so we're going to be excluding that, and the only thing you're going to see is the gun, or the hand, if you want to include the hand in the model. But I thought we'd keep it simple, and just have it be a floating gun, and kind of go with that like floaty, cartoony style. Um, just because we're going indie and, you know, thought it'd be cool. So the scripts that are going to be attached to the pill capsule are the player movement script, and this script is going to be in charge of W, A, S, and D, and shift, and spacebar turning into walking forward, sidestepping, walking backwards, crouching, and jumping. Um, and then what else does that do? And then it works a little bit with, I think, mostly the mouse look script. And the mouse look script is what we're going to be attaching to the camera. And that's going to be responsible for when we move the mouse, it turns into a looking movement. Um, and then the main camera is going to be attached to the player capsule. So that is like our first object there. The body and the eyes and the script that moves the body and the eyes. So there you have it, the player capsule. Um, Next, what we have is kind of very closely related to the player capsule, but we couldn't include it directly inside of the player capsule for certain reasons, um, and that is because it is a crouch detection cube. So what I wanted was a cube that floats above your head, and it's invisible, and it just tells you, like, say you're crouching under something, like a, like a low vent or something, and your head's right here and the ceiling's right here, the cube is going to be floating inside of a solid object, so it's going to set off and say, hey, there's a ceiling right here, don't stand up. Um, so that is what the crouch detection cube is going to do. And I couldn't include it inside of the player capsule, um, because I didn't want the collisions from the player capsule and the cube to um, intersect each other and basically become one big collision. They had to be separate collisions in code. Um, so yeah, let's move on. Next we have the enemy target, and what the enemy target is going to be is, um, it's going to be a placeholder for enemies. So that means later on we're making some enemies, and they actually will be able to move around, shoot back at you, be interesting to fight, whereas right now we just have some targets to show you the basic idea of how enemies are going to work. So it's just a target, it can be any shape you want. Right now we just have cubes. Um, and when you shoot it with a gun, it lowers the health and you like have a predefined amount of health on the target. Once that reaches zero, it explodes. Um, so that just shows you, it's a target that shows you basically what the enemies are gonna kind of be like in code. Next we have is the level. Now what the level is going to be is actually an empty game object it's going to be used as a folder and then we're going to put all the different things we want inside of that folder like the terrain, any, the ground, the walls, the buildings, anything that we want the level to be. Um, we're going to put in there. Anything that you just want out of the way that's just a part of the level, you're going to put in the level folder. 
which is technically an empty game object. Um, next we're going to have is the gun. Now with the gun, it is an empty game object, or it starts off that way, until we add a script to it, and that is the gun script, I think is what I called it. Yeah, it's just gun script. It does everything the gun needs to do, um, from the gun just laying on the ground waiting for you to pick it up, to the gun actually following the player around as if the player is holding the gun. So it is in charge of that, it's in charge of right clicking to aim down your gun, it's in charge of shooting bullets. Everything that the gun does is part of the, or is attached to the empty game object called gun. Then the gun has two or two or more children and that is going to be the bullet spawn and that is where relative to the gun is the bullet going to spawn basically and then we're going to have different parts slash a model so depending on if you want to make your gun completely out of cubes like I probably am just for the heck of it or if you want to import your own model and use that as the gun um, that's what's going to be attached to the gun so that we can actually see it and then we can place it exactly where we want so that it, the gun lines down the barrel perfectly and you can use real sights on the gun. Um, so we'll go over more of that later, obviously. And then we just have a light source. And that's the last game object that's going to be in our scene. And then we're going to have some prefabs. And prefabs are basically game objects that you don't want into your scene yet. And you want to be able to spawn them as much as you want. So we have one, four game mob, or four prefabs so far. The first one is bullet and that's going to be obviously the bullet and when it is created it shoots forward at lightning speed and then it creates a bullet hole and the bullet hole is going to be our second prefab and then our third prefab is going to be the muzzle flash. Um, so I didn't go over bullet hole. The bullet hole is going to be not only the little decal that sits on the wall that looks like there's a hole in the wall from the bullet, but it's also going to create a little bit of smoke and some sparks and like whatever comes off the wall when a bullet hits a wall. Um, and then we're going to have the muzzle flash. And the muzzle flash is basically just a particle that flashes really quick and really bright, a flash from the muzzle. Um, so yeah, and then we have the enemy target. Uh, and I wanted, they didn't have to be a prefab, but I wanted to show you um, how prefabs can be useful in the editor for things like placing an enemy all around your game and you don't really know exactly where you're going to place it or how many and you want to experiment with numbers. Prefabs are very good for that, so I wanted one example to show you how to do that. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much everything in how this first person shooter is going to work. So let's actually go on the computer and I'm going to show you all the different parts in Unity so that you can visualize it on your computer screen now. Um, so yeah, let's go down to the computer and record that. Okay, here we are inside of Unity and let's get through this really quickly because we have a lot to go over and we have like a four minute time limit. So here we go. So first, uh, let's start with everything that's in the hierarchy or the list of all the game objects that are inside the scene. So first we have the capsule or the player capsule um, and as you can see it's just a pill looking capsule with a collider and where's the collider? The collider and a rigid body attached to it. And then we have attached to the capsule the main camera. Uh, so these are the eyes. Uh, so we got body, eyes, and they both have a script attached to them. We have the player movement script and this is our second longest script, I think. And this uh, basically just controls WSAD, shift, and spacebar. So walking, uh, shift, or I mean walking, crouch, and jumping. Uh, and then what else does this do? Uh, and then it also lines up the uh, capsule with the view of the camera uh, because those are, they need to work together. Um, and then we have the main camera, and that has a script, mouse look script attached to it. Uh, so basically this whole script's job is to take the movement of the mouse and turn it into actual looking around in 3D space. And then it also controls head bob. So when we walk, there's some side to side and some up and down movement to add some natural walking looking 
look to the scene. Yes, what, what am I talking about? Okay, and now we have the crouch detection cube. And we have this separate from the capsule because we don't want the collision from the capsule to be mixed up with the collision from the crouch detection cube. And that is just a script that makes the crouch detection cube follow the player and float just right above its head. And then we have a uh, some script that just tells whether or not there is a uh, collision detected. Um, and then what else we have? Next we have the gun, which is a game object with only the gun script attached to it. And then we have the bullet spawn, and then all of the cubes or the model that make up the gun. Um, so this script is going to be our longest script so far. Uh, and this controls the gun actually following the player around in 3D space and floating in a position that looks like it's being held in your hands. Uh, and then it will aim down the sights when you hold down right click, shoot when you hold down left click, change the sensitivity of the gun moving back and forth and the accuracy of the gun when you hold down right click. Um, it creates muzzle flashes. Uh, what else does it do? Uh, it has some damping uh, when you look left and right and up and down so that it looks like it has some weight to it. Uh, and it might do one other thing. I'm not sure what else this script does, uh, but we will go over that in more detail later. Uh, next, we have the level. And as you can see, it's just an empty game object. We're just using it as a folder. And inside that, we have, let me zoom out so you can see me selecting them. We have all the uh, different cubes that I used to make up this little level and the terrain right here. Uh, and then last, we just have a big point light, which it probably would have been easier to do a directional light. I'm not really sure why I used a point light. Um, but yeah, that just lights up our scene. So next, let's go over um, our project window. So these are all of our saved files. Uh, we have all of the scripts in here. And then we have the sound effect for the laser or the gun. Um, and then we have a couple of textures, a couple of materials that use those textures. And the terrain. Um, and I think that's everything. And then we have the prefabs. So the first prefab is the bullet, and the bullet is just an empty game object, or not an empty game object, but a game object with just a script attached to it. Because we don't need a model or anything like that, because the gun or the bullet appears and disappears so quickly that you never even see it. So the bullet uh, is just the empty game object, or the game object with just the script. And then we have the bullet sound, um, which is just a game object with the sound and a script that says destroy after time. And what the bullet script does is right in the beginning, um, it will detach the children, uh, which means it will turn this and this into completely separate game objects that work independently from each other. So bullet sound will live longer than just the split second that the bullet is alive for, so that it actually has two seconds to play the sound effect of the bullet. Um, and then we have a bullet hole, which is what the bullet will create when it detects a wall. Um, and this just destroys itself after 10 seconds or any amount of time we want to give it. And then it has uh, the actual bullet hole, a plane with a material on it, and the Sparks particle system, which, which is a one-shot particle system that we could really make into anything, a little bit of smoke, a little bit of debris, anything that comes off of a wall when a bullet hits it. And then we have the muzzle flash. And the muzzle flash is also just a particle system. It's a one shot, uh, destroys itself after it's done doing the little bit of particle animation that we have the muzzle flash be. And then it has a point light attached to it. And I don't know if you've noticed before, but I'm going to show you. Uh, see how the walls and floor light up as I shoot to add like just some flash to the gun? Yeah, that's the uh, point light. It's only lasting as long as the uh, particle system that is the muzzle flash. So, yes, I think we actually just went over everything. Um, so, yes, yeah, that's the first person shooter. I'm going to teach you guys uh, 
from start to finish how we made all that. And until the next episode, I will see you guys later.